This is part 75 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll continue discussing list collection class in C-sharp. This is continuation to part 74, so please watch part 74 from the C-sharp tutorial before proceeding with this video. We'll be discussing all these functions. First, let's look at this contains function. This function checks if an item exists in the list, and if an item does exist in the list, then this method returns true, otherwise false. Let's look at that in action. We'll be using this customer class in this demo. Notice that this class is very simple with three auto-implemented properties, ID, name, and salary. And within the main method, we are creating three instances of this customer class, customer1, customer2, and customer3. And then we are creating a list of customers. And to that list, we are adding customer1, customer2, and customer3 objects. Now let's check if customer3 object exists in the list. And to do that, we can use contains method. So contains, and look at that, this method expects an object of type customer. So let's go ahead and pass customer3 object. And look at the return type, it's a boolean, meaning it's going to return a true or a false. If the object exists, it returns true, otherwise false. And let's say if the object exists, we want to print a message stating customer3 objects exist in the list. Else, We want to print a message stating customer3 object does not exist in the list. So since customer object, customer3 object, object is there, we should get that message. Now, let's remove that object from the list. So we only have at the moment customer1 and customer2 object in the list. Let me run this now and look at that. Customer3 object does not exist in the list. All right. Now, let's look at using exists function. Now, this function also checks if an item exists in the list, but based on a given condition. Okay, And again, if the item exists within the list, then this method is going to return true, otherwise false. So for both of these methods, the return type is a Boolean. Okay, So let's see how to use exists function. First of all, let's go ahead and add customer3 object as well. All right. Now, when I use exists function, look at that. It asks me to pass a predicate, so which means we can pass a lambda expression here. Now, let's say I want to check whether if the if this list contains a customer whose names uh, name starts with P. Okay. Now we do have a customer object um, whose name starts with P. So. If I want to base my search based on that condition, then I can use this exist function. So we need to pass a lambda expression here. So we have you know, this list of customers contain a customer object. So let's say customer such that customer.name dot starts with maybe letter P. And we do have a customer whose name starts with P. So it should say customer three, I mean, um, it should come into this if block and print this message. So let me actually run this. Look at that customer three objects exist in the list. On the other hand, you know we don't have a customer whose name starts with Z. Okay, so obviously when we run this, the method should return false and it should come to the else part and print this message. Okay, customer three object does not exist in the list. Now you can give any kind of message that you want here. Just in the interest of time, I didn't change that message there. All right, so the only difference between contains and exists is that with the exists function, you can specify a condition, but with contains, you can't do that. You pass the uh, object itself to that function. Now let's look at using find function. So this function searches for an element that matches the conditions defined by the specified lambda expression, and then it returns the first matching item from the list okay so again this condition i mean this function expects a condition to be passed and then if, even if there are several items matching that condition this function is going to only return the first matching item from the list let's look at using that okay now let's say uh, if you look at these employees you know um, there are two employees whose salary is greater than 5,000, customer2 and customer3. Now let's use find method. So let's get rid of this piece of code. 
So list customers dot find and look at that again we need to pass a predicate um, so let's pass a lambda expression so let's say customer such that customer dot salary greater than 5000 okay now look at the return type of this function unlike contains and exists this function actually returns a customer object so this find function is going to return the actual object back okay whereas contains and exists return um, a boolean it only tells you whether the object exists in the collection or not but then this find function is going to find that object if it exists it's going to return that okay so let's store the returned object in a variable of type customer and maybe let's call it C okay and look at this it only returns one customer object back the find method and then maybe we want to print uh, the details of the customer maybe their ID name and salary and to speed things up I have already typed that so ID equals name equals salary equals we have placeholders there and then we are basically printing their ID name and salary so let me go ahead and run this and see if it's going to print the details of that employee look at that it has uh, printed the details of Pam so Pam is the first matching customer whose salary is greater than 5000 so it doesn't give you the second customer okay all right now let's look at using find last function again this function searches for an element um, that matches the conditions that are defined by the specified lambda expression and then this method is going to return the last matching item from the list okay so if there are multiple items that matches the given condition then this find last function returns the last matching item okay so the same function I mean the same code but then instead of using find you know I'm going to use find last and again this method expects a predicate so we are passing this lambda expression here at this point it should actually return us this customer that is Rob so let's run this and see if it works that way and look at that we get Rob whose salary is greater than 5000 so that's the difference between find and find last find is going to return the first matching item whereas find last is going to return the last matching item both based on a given condition all right if you want all the items then we have find all function so let's look at using find all function so obviously if you look at this function find all look at the return type instead of returning a single customer back it is returning list of customers back okay so which means this is going to return all the customers who match the given condition from the list okay so let's include list here so list of customer and maybe let's call it customers and then since we have a list here let's loop through and print the details and let's use a for each loop so for each customer and let's call it C in our customers collection so we are basically printing out their uh, ID name and salary again so let's run this and see if we get both the employees look at that I get both the employees who I mean both the customers whose salary is greater than 5000 okay all right now let's look at using this find index function so obviously find index returns the index of the first item that matches the condition specified by the lambda expression and there are two overloads of this method which allows us to specify the range of elements to search within that list let's look at that in action so we have this list of customers here now let's say I want to find index so find index returning an integer so it's going to return the index of the matching element so we need to specify again a lambda expression here let's use the same lambda expression customer dot salary greater than 5000 and let's say int maybe index equals that and then let's print the index
okay so we have two employees whose salary is greater than 5000 so this should now return the index of customer 2 object and the index of customer 2 object is 1 because the index is 0 based so customer 1 is 0 and customer 2 is 1 and this find index method is going to return only the first matching items index now there are two customer objects which match this condition but we are only going to get the index of the first matching customer so let's run this and look at that index is 1 as expected now find last index is going to return the last matching items index we'll come back to that in just a bit but then look at this this find index method has got several overloads as well so we have three, three overloads here so basically here we are only specifying the condition but the next overload you can also specify the start index so at what point in the list do you want to start searching do you want to start searching at position 0 or position 1 or position 2 you can specify that as well using you know this overload where we can specify the index so let's specify the index as um, 2 so if we specify 0 1 2 as the index then we are going to get this customer object so let's specify the index as 2 and now it should give us 0 1 2 as the index let's run this and look at that so it's giving us you know from here the matching element is customer 3 and customer 3 index within the list is 3 and we get that I mean sorry 2 okay and there is another overload as well so if you have several items in the list um, not only can you specify the start index you can also specify from that start index how many items you want to look up okay so it's going to you know look in the range of those elements and then return the index of the first matching element okay now similarly we have another method find last index so this is going to return the index of the last matching element okay so let's call let's invoke find last index and again this method also has got three overloads and the use cases are the same okay so now this should return the index of customer 3 object which is uh, 2 because there are two matching elements but this function is going to return the index of the last matching element so let's go ahead and run this so index is 2 alright now let's look at converting an array to a list so how do we convert an array to a list simply use this to list method so first of all let's get rid of this code here and then let's create an array so customer and maybe let's call it customer array equals new customer array and then let's create um, let's set the array size to 3 customer array of 0 equals customer 1 and similarly let's initialize the array with the rest of the customer objects all right now I want to convert this array to a list all we need to do is customer array dot to list and look at the return type of this function it is returning a list back okay so basically we can store that in a list type so list customer and let's call it maybe list customers and then obviously you can use a for each loop and loop through each customer object and print their details so for each customer C in list customers so this will verify that the list is I mean the array is successfully converted to a list and just to speed things up we have that already typed so let's copy and paste it there let's run it now and we should get all the three customers okay similarly we can convert a list to an array okay so here at the moment um, let's get rid of this one and let's say list customers equals new list of customer and then to this list let's add customer objects so list customers dot add customer one object 
and let's add customer 2 and customer 3 as well. Now to convert this list into an array, we simply say list customers to array and look at the return type, what do we get back? Customer array. So you can store those elements in an array of type, um, you know, customers and then loop through them in the same manner. Okay. And we can also convert a list to a dictionary and to do that again use two dictionary. Very simple and straightforward. Let's look at that actually. So let's convert this list to a dictionary. So when we say list dot to dictionary and obviously when you want to convert a list to a dictionary you need to specify the key for the dictionary and then the value for the dictionary okay now value part is optional since this is a list of customers by default if you don't specify the value then the value is going to be that customer object so let's just specify the key so I want the key to be the ID of the customer so obviously this is going to return a dictionary back so dictionary of key um, you know the type is going to be the key of the dictionary is going to be integer and the value is going to be customer and let's call it maybe dictionary equals um, you know whatever this function is returning now let's loop through that dictionary and dictionary is a collection of key value pair so for each key value pair key is going to be of type integer value is going to be of type customer and let's call this maybe kvp key value pair in the given dictionary so we are going to loop through that dictionary and then obviously if you want to get the key from the key value pair you simply say key okay and then let's say we want to print that so console dot write line key equals kvp dot key and then we want to print the details of the customer I mean the value as well the value is nothing but the customer object so let's get the customer object um, let's set the variable name as C and how do I get the value simply say key value pair dot value and look at that it's going to return a customer object back and then here we are printing ID name and salary of that customer so let's go ahead and run this now and we should see the respective keys and value objects all right that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.